The second part of the process is the actual digitization of the film. Once it's been prepared, it comes here, and we put it on the projector. Now this is a film projector that projects the film into the camera. And the camera captures the image of the film and it's sent across to the computer here where it's captured in the software. So when the film is running, we're capturing all those frames and we're digitizing the film. We open up the aperture and clean the gate. And then we can actually have a long enough feed to lace it through. So we put it through the brushes first and around the top roller and close the little marker. We open the gate, take the film down and set it so that the top part is around the black edge of that and this, the film is sitting on the sprockets. And then we shut the gate. Then we can open the bottom sprocket path, pathway and put the film onto the bottom sprockets so that it's above the black line on the top of the black line below the gate. Then we can wind it around the sound drum. We need to pull down both the sprocket um, lock and the lock on the, um, the other little roller there. His name escapes me at the moment. Now we put that through, we've got it hooked over the sprocket. We can release this, which creates tension around the, the roller. And we can feed it back up through here and onto our take-up reel. And then we have the whole thing going. The key now is just to check the wind. So we can take this around to the side and just check that in actual fact the loops are actually matching the black area. So when it goes down, both loops should go to the bottom of the black area. When it comes up, they should be at the top. If that's the case, it's ready to go. First thing we've got to do is check that the frequency is at 50.05, and that's correct. If it's not, you've got adjustment here to take it to 50.05, and that it's actually on forward. That's important, so that when you actually press the run button, the projector is going to run forward. This knob here is controlling the voltage of the projector lamp. If the film is looking too dark, you can wind the voltage up to make it a little brighter. If it's looking too bright, you can wind it back to reduce the voltage to allow the film to be at its optimum level. The three most important ones are the master pedestal, the detail and the gain. Gain has to be fully back at zero. Detail has to be fully up around to as far as it'll go on the control. And the master pedestal, which is the level of the black in the film, needs to be up two markers from the very top of the dial. So well, you can see where that is now, and it just needs to be two markers. You need to refer to your sheet to see whether the sound is optical or magnetic and wherever you see optical sound you need to make sure that's pressed down when that piece of film is running through and if you see the magnetic film is the next thing coming up we need to press that button and change the selection. Now it's a little bit more complex than that. There are a few things that you really need to know, intricacies about the projector and the system but you'll find those all in the documentation manual. An important thing just to mention is that the projector starts and stops with this button here. But that's a very slow ramp up or slow down part of the process. If there's a need for an emergency stop, in other words, if the film is suddenly causing a problem and you need to stop the projector instantly to protect the film, there's a kill switch here. You thump that and the projector will stop instantly. So that's the, the information in an overview about the system, but there are intricacies you need to understand 
and you'll find those in the detailed instruction manual.